In this module, I'll be covering how to use the turnkey Azure SignalR service. This is another solution for scaling and is an alternative to hosting your own Redis instance. You may want to consider the Azure SignalR service because it's fully managed. This means you aren't hosting your own Redis instances or the load balancer or its configuration. It's a fully managed service. I'm in the Azure portal and I'm going to create a new resource of the Azure SignalR service. So you just search for SignalR, there it is. And I can go down to create. And from here, what I'm going to do is just enter a resource name as we'll call this practical signal R. I'm going to use my existing subscription and I'm going to create a new resource group called signal R. So for pricing tier, this is where it can get interesting. If you just want to test it out, then the free tier is probably suitable. You just have a signal unit with up to hundred connections and there's no scaling there in terms of the number of units that you can have. And standard allows you up to 10 units, 1,000 connections per unit. You can see the rest. I suspect this is going to change in terms of the pricing tiers and what will be available once this comes out of preview. So for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to use the standard tier so I can show you how you can scale out and select um, and change the number of units that you're using. So we'll just go ahead and create the resource. And what we want to do is actually take a peek at the keys. So if you go to keys, you can see the primary and secondary. What we want to do here is copy the connection string of our primary. Now that we have our Azure resource created, we can jump back to some code. There's a NuGet package, microsoft.azure.signalr, that we're going to need in order to use the new service. So let's jump over to the csproj file and add it as a package reference. So underneath our Redis, we'll leave that uh, just to keep it for the demo. So we'll do an include and we'll do microsoft.azure.signalr and use the version that's appropriate. Uh, the latest right now is preview one. And once I save this, it's going to ask me to restore. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now we need to store our connection string, which contains our API key for our Azure SignalR service. It's not recommended to keep it in source control, so I'm going to use the ASP.NET Core Secrets Manager. To get started with that, I need to add an element in our csproj called user secrets ID with a random GUID. So I'm going to use the .NET CLI to add our new user secret of our connection string. So I can do .NET space user secrets space set, and then the key here is going to be Azure colon signalr colon connection string, and that's the default key that our config is going to be looking for. And then I'm going to follow that with, in quotes, our connection string that we copied from the Azure portal. So in order to start using these user secrets within our app, we need to get them to load. We can do that off of the configure app configuration method. And this has a web host builder context and a iConfiguration builder. And that configuration builder is actually what we want to use. So we can call from here um, config.addUserSecrets. Now this will basically load the user secrets that we've defined and make them a part of our configuration in our startup. If you're unfamiliar with user secrets and this is completely new to you, I'll provide a link to the official documentation. But again, the purpose of this is that we don't want to store the connection string, which can ultimately contains our API key to the Azure SignalR service. We don't want to store that in our source control. So user secrets is a way to manage that. So now I'm going to add some code to actually start using our Azure SignalR. So let's comment the existing code that we had in using Redis. We don't need that anymore. And we call services.addSignalR. And then subsequently, add Azure SignalR. So this will add all the required uh, types to our dependency injection. And then what we can do is in our Configure, let's get rid of our normal use of SignalR, and we will call app.useAzureSignalR. And this works very similar to the other one, so I'll just literally copy and paste our config so we can map our hub to the same endpoint. So let's just copy that over, and that's it. So let's hit F5, get this running in the browser. And when Chrome opens, what I'm going to do is open DevTools so that you can actually see that it's hitting the Azure SignalR endpoint. So there it is, practicalsignalr.service.signalr.net. And if you open the Azure portal, 
you can actually see now the number of connections. And I've been playing around with this. So you see that I've had six connections over a different period of time. And what's really awesome is if you're using the standard tier and you can change the unit count, this is how easy it is. It's just a matter of sliding to change the unit count, which ultimately gives you more connections that can connect to your hubs. As you can see, it's incredibly easy to scale using the Azure SignalR service. It allows you to scale out without having to worry about the infrastructure of Redis or a load balancer. It manages all of this for you. Simply a matter of modifying your application code and your hubs work as expected.